Hi BookTube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be the wrap up of the books that I finished or started in the month of September. September wasn't too bad a month, if you saw my TBR video then you know that I was considering taking part in two readathons. I decided to only take part in one and that was Becca's book operathon. I haven't ruled out the idea of doing the magical readathon, I just might do it in another month maybe when um, no one else is doing it and when I have less pressure to get things read. So I did download um, the Bookopoly board and I did actually plot it all out and I have it all drawn out and I did use it. I used a randomizer app on my phone to record um, the dice rolls so what I'm going to try and do in this video is I'm going to try and go through, show you the dice rolls, show you where that landed on the board and then um, talk you through the book that I read for that choice. So here we go with the first roll. So the first roll was a seven and this, as you saw, landed on the chance square. The chance square, you had to uh, print out a load of cards and write on them uh, books that you do, you, that you really wanted to or really didn't want to read. Um, I did a choice of eight books and again, instead of printing out the cards, I don't have access to a printer at home. So instead of printing out those cards, what I did was I used a randomizer app to put in the list of the books and as you saw I used that to select the book and this selected He Said Never by Ruth Cardello. This is a romance novel about a couple and it was an advanced reader copy. Um, it was about a couple who like each other um, but for various reasons were pulling in opposite directions and didn't think that the other wanted to be together it was one of those uh, we're in love with each other but we don't want to admit it to each other and that's as far as we're going to go there is a happy ever after they do get together in the end i did thoroughly thoroughly enjoy it and i was glad i read it and i would definitely read more books by ruth cardello in future didn't make me immediately want to pick up the next book in the series um, but I would definitely look out for it and I would certainly look out for it on NetGalley so that I could give it advanced readers reviews in future. So here we go with the second roll. So this rolled a six as you saw and this took me to the square titled New. Now this could be a new to you author, it could be a new book, or it could be something um, new. If it was a new to you your author, you then had the option of maybe a book that you hadn't heard a lot about in recent um, years. So I decided to go with the new to me author, but a book I've not really heard a lot about recently. And I picked The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. This is a fantasy book set in kind of Greco-Roman times. So when the Romans, um, based around the Romans and the siege of Athens, when they uh, marched on Athens and obviously were ruling Athens at that point. Um, but obviously we have different races named in this. It's not directly, it's, it's inspired by. And it's about a young woman who... Um, takes on a slave uh, by mistake and she decides to um, get to know him better in the course of him working for her uh, but he's actually planning a rebellion and she unwittingly gets involved in that and it's how it all pans out from there really enjoyed it it kept me quite gripped i moved through it very very quickly and i did really enjoy it i do want to know what comes next so I do have my eye on the next book. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to get to it very soon because my reading plans for October mean that I need to get through um, some other books first. 
but this is definitely on my radar for when I have a few spare pennies to be able to invest in the next book in the series um, to pick it up or if not to definitely be one that I see if I can get from my library. So on to roll number three. Roll number three was a three and as you saw that landed on history and that was a book that is about history or inspired by historical events and for this I picked Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This is a Theseus and the Minotaur retelling but told from Ariadne's point of view instead of from Theseus point of view and it's about what happens to Ariadne after Theseus defeats the Minotaur and ends up being abandoned on the island of Naxos where she meets Dionysus and becomes his wife. And I absolutely adored this book, not just for the cover, I absolutely adored the writing, I absolutely adored the telling, I appreciated the fact that Jennifer Saint has gone with a different point of view, so when you read um, lots of the, the historical texts surrounding Greek and Roman mythology is always being told from the male's perspective rather than from the female perspective and there is a real clutch at the moment of writers who are writing um, Greek mythology retellings and telling them from the women's point of view and also pointing out and um, Ariadne actually points this out or Jennifer Saint through Adne, Ariadne points this out that actually every time a man does something wrong in ancient Greece the gods punish the women in his life, um, which it's not, I mean, I don't know lots about Greek mythology anyway, um, but it is certainly something I was starting to pick up on and it definitely gets pointed out in this book because Ariadne's mother, um, Poseidon is angry with Minos, Ariadne's father, um, and he puts a spell on Ariadne's mother, which meant that she gave birth to the Minotaur. Um, how is that punishing Minos? That doesn't punish Minos, that punishes Ariadne's mother. Um, but yes, it's also told uh, from the perspective of Phaedra, who is Ariadne's sister and who does go on to marry Theseus. Um, and also cover, touches on the um, myth retelling of uh, Ariadne and, no not Ariadne, of Phaedra and Hippolytus, uh, Theseus' son. By the Amazons. Um, so I just really 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 enjoyed this book and loved it and it's given me a, again how I felt after I finished Song of Achilles. It's given me a real taste for Greek mythologi mythological retellings. I have a couple more on my shelves. I have The Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes and I have Circe by Madeline Miller. So again I'm really looking forward to picking those up at some point in the future inspired by Ariadne and the Song of Achilles. So roll number four, let's see what happened there. And I got another seven and this landed on opulent um now for opulent you had to pick something that was related to aristocracy so kings queens dukes duchess um crowns it could have anything like that in the title or the story could be based around that um either way so i went with traitors of the black crown by kate pierce this was an advanced reader copy i had from netgalley that i had to read in the month of september because it released at the end of september and I needed to get the review up for that one. And it's based around a young woman whose entire family is murdered when she is a young girl and she wants to get revenge on the Queen um, who orchestrated that uh, massacre. She goes to stay with friends of her father's who, where she actually disguises herself as a boy until she comes of age and goes to do a trial to become a knight. However, during the trial, she is then banished to a kingdom where she meets another young woman, a duchess called Avena, and they fall in love. The first half of this book, and I've talked about this in quite a bit in uh, my 
reading vlog that I did while I was on holiday. Uh, but the first half of this book deals quite heavily with the romance, developing romance, um, between the two main characters, between Rowan and um, Avena. And I found that very hard going because I just kept thinking, when are you going to get to the plot? When are you going to get to the plot? Why couldn't you have built this in as part of the, the plot? Uh, and then the second half of the book then deals with the actual plot and we deal with um, the fallout of what's happening. Um, I won't tell you anymore because it will spoil it for you and anything that happens from 50% onwards is not in the synopsis. So I can't tell you anything else about it. I did enjoy it. It's not the best fantasy book that I've ever read. I am intrigued enough to want to know what happened next, but it won't be a priority pickup for me at any time soon. Um, other than that, I, I, I would recommend it, um, but I think you maybe need to be very patient to read it. So let's find out what role number five did to me. So roll number five gave me yet another seven and this landed on scroll feed. Uh, the For this one you had to open up um, either Instagram or Facebook or, or anything like that or TikTok and scroll through until a book that you owned came up in the um, in your feed. So let's actually have a look and see what happened when I decided to open Instagram. So I struck lucky. Uh, as soon as I opened Instagram, a book that I had on pre-order was the first book that came up in my feed. And that book was One Day Like This by Scarlett Cole. This is a romance novel about Matt and Isabel. And Matt is a want to be rock star. Uh, he and his band are working really, really hard to try and make their dreams come true. Isabel is the younger sister of the drummer who is also Matt's best friend. Following an incident um, a few years previous, um, the drummer, had, whose name I've forgotten, had decided to make his bandmates swear that they would consider Isabel off limits. However, Matt and Izzy have been in love since they were in their teens. It was unacknowledged, um, but Matt decides to defend Isabel against her ex-boyfriend and pretend that he is her new boyfriend which means they have to go to a wedding together, which means they're staying in a bedroom with one bed. And yeah, we all know where this goes. One bed, fake dating, um, using the words of Elbow's song, One Day Like This, to inspire them. They decide to see what one day being a couple would be like. And it was really sweet and it was really bittersweet at the same time because they both walk away knowing that it's not going to not going to happen. However, temptation is in their path and they embark on a secret relationship, which they have to keep hidden from everyone in their lives. And it's then about the ensuing fallout when people do start to find out. I did really, really enjoy this book. Um, I've talked about a couple of books in this wrap up which have sequels and um, that I really want to get to at some point. This book is the first book in a series surrounding the band The Sad Fridays and the next book is already um, set up with a, a release date. I immediately logged on to Amazon and pre-ordered book two. I haven't done that with a book series for a long, long time. So for them, for me to do this, this must have been really good. I must have been really in the mood for this, for romance. Um, I've read I've read a few romance this year, so it's not like I haven't read any romance this year. And I was reading Traitors of the Black Crown at the same time. I, I read this one in between um, bouts of reading Traitors of the Black Crown. Um, so I was reading books with romance in. It, it's just that this one, just something about Scarlett Cole's writing just grabbed me and... I, I had to, to pick it up and carry on and and I want to see, I want to know where the band goes from here um, because they're, it's left on a cliffhanger for one of, the, one of the, the band members and it's their book that's next. 
so I want to know what where it goes from here and I want to know if that next fan member um how he gets a redemption and how he um finds his happy ever after because I think he does deserve it after having read this book he's a little pain in this book um but I can understand why um and I just want to see him get his happy ever after as well so I was going on holiday and I was thinking I might run out of books uh, while I was on holiday so I rolled the dice a couple more times now I'm only going to talk about one of the rolls because I didn't get to any more books after that so roll number six let's have a look and see what that did So that threw up a double. If you throw a double, you are meant to roll the dice again and pick another book as well. Um, obviously, I was picking multiple books, so I did that anyway. However, I didn't get beyond this book and I was rolling the dice as I went along through the month. So as you can see, this gave me a 12 and this moved me on to Community Chest. Again, like chance, you were supposed to print out a load of cards and on there you were supposed to write a load of um, supposed to write 16 prompts. And whichever one you picked off the top of the pile was supposed to be the prompt that you picked a book for. So let's have a look and see what the pick was for the community chest, what the prompt was. So as you can see from the list, I used the randomizer app again with the list and this threw up fantasy. So for this, I picked The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. This is the third book in his uh, Dark Material series. And I really want to get to it. I'm not sure if the third TV series adaptation of this book is coming out this year or if it will be coming out next year. But if it is, I want to get to it. And because it is classed as fantasy, I thought what better excuse than this to read it. So I've made a start on that one. I've only got about 100 pages into it, um, so it is carrying forward into October. It will be one of the first books I finish in the month of October. And I'm thorough, I'm enjoying it. I was a little bit lost to start with. I did. I do remember thinking this the first time around that I read it, that I was a little bit lost um, with Lord Azriel's story. Um, but I am starting to pick it back up again now. I'm starting to remember where... I am and where it goes and I'm looking forward to finishing it in October um, I can't really say anything more than that because it would spoil the first two books for you but they are really great um, early teens uh, late middle grade books um, for children who have that capacity so those were all the books that I read in relation to God's Grave um, now I did have three other books uh, to talk about I also um started to listen to an audiobook i wanted to go out for a, a walk and um, but i was meeting a friend so to listen to the beginning of the book i picked sleepy hollow and i did actually read this one in listen to this one in its entirety um it's about ichabod crane um and i wasn't paying great attention to it to be perfectly honest with you it was just really background noise while i was doing things um, I think a lot of people know the story to Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horseman um, and how it taunts Ichabod Crane. Um, and yeah, it was just a good book. Probably would have been better if I'd listened to it towards the end of October when we're really in spooky season. So I didn't really get the atmosphere from it. Um, but I did enjoy it and I would listen to it again um, just to pick up on more of the story. Another book that I picked up and started, but again, wasn't anything related to uh, Bacopolathon, is God's Grave by Jay Christoph. And that is because I've got this from the library and I need to get it read and get it sent back. Um, enjoying it, it's following Mia, who is an assassin, and she is trying to avenge the death of her family from many years before. Can't really say any more than that. It would spoil it. Um, but yes, I got about... A third almost half of the way through it uh, so again I'm carrying this one forward into October the same as I am the Amber Spyglass so the final book I'm going to talk about is an audiobook 
I was going on holiday, like I said earlier in the video, and I needed to um, find an audiobook to listen to because the place where I was staying was about an hour and a half to two hour drive away from where I live. And I picked Raced by Kane Bromberg purely because it was a four, four and a half hour audiobook and I could easily listen to it in the drive um, there and back again. And I did, I managed to listen to it. Raced is a companion novel to her Driven series. It is set during the Driven series and it's a retelling of it through Colton's point of view. Now, it's not in the same vein as we've had with Fifty Shades of Grey and the Twilight series where the authors have gone back and rewritten the entire books from um, Christian and um, I've forgotten the vampire's name, um, points of view. What Christy did was her readers asked her for specific chapters to be told from Colton's point of view because they really wanted to know what he was thinking in those moments. So Christy did that and she did that with all three books. Fjord and Crashed, she had written certain um, chapters from Colton's point of view anyway, but there were other chapters where there were things happening that us as the readers wanted to know what was Colton thinking as well as what was Riley thinking. And she did that and that's what Race is. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was laughing and smiling all the way home because he's just one ball of mess right at the beginning of these books for the first first two for the first two books anyway for driven and fueled he is one ball of emotional mess and he has no idea what's going on with himself um so it was really amusing to hear his thoughts sometimes and then by crash with him realizing just where he is um in his life and especially at the end where you get the realization of just where this relationship is heading for him and how he got there and I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it and it was a really really great book to finish and it was a really great book uh, to listen to on my journey so those were all the books that I either started and finished or just started during the month of September hi editing Lynette here and uh, as I said that and went through it I realized that I had left a book out and that book is where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vanderar. This was the Just One More Page book club pick for the month of September. And I did read it. I read it before the book club meeting. I'm really proud of myself. So I'm trying to keep this on track now to the end of the year. Uh, this is about a woman, Joanna Teal, who, following treatment for cancer, um, has taken up her work again. Um, she's a scientist and she goes out to the countryside where she's doing her scientific work um, and there she meets a young girl who calls herself Ursa and says she is from the stars and that she is only allowed to be on earth uh, for five miracles. Um, through this she then meets her neighbour properly Gabe and it's about the relationship between the three of them. Um, this book was a bit hit and miss for all of the book club. I don't think anybody's given it more than three, three and a half stars. We liked the premise of the book. Um, however, the execution left something to be desired. This is uh, the author's debut novel. So it may be that um, with some guidance and editing, her writing gets better. And I think we were all kind of on the same page that we would consider reading more by this author in the future. Um, however, this one, there was just something missing. Um, there was some good and some bad um, with it. Obviously, it does have mental health representation, but uh, the way the way others handle mental health um, and someone's mental health issues, for me, was kind of accurately portrayed. But the way that the person with the mental health issues acts and um and the resolution of that um isn't isn't great so and yeah and there's there's just lots of things surrounding the issues with the young girl with ursa um which could have been wrapped up in a better way i think she was left with lots of threads at the end and she just wrapped them up as quickly as she could just to get the book finished um but yeah, so I just wanted to pop on and just let you know that, yes, I did read this one as well. Um, it's got to go back to the library today, so I just thought I'd nip in quickly to talk about this one as well. 
how did your reading month go? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you managed to get through in September. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then please subscribe to the channel. And I make videos and they go up every Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I'll see you all again in the next one. Bye.